Hi, good afternoon everybody and welcome to Life in Vibe. My name is Ray Blair and we have a special July the 4th weekend edition coming to you from the very glamorous patio of my condo here in the Oceanfront Virginia Beach area. So I just wanted to welcome everybody kind of got some peace and quiet um, at this moment I'm gonna try to keep my voice down because I'm not really trying to get everybody listening to me do a reaction to a podcast um, but I did have a podcast I wanted to share today and so I did want to put a disclaimer out every time um, that we are doing a podcast reaction to a public figure that this reaction is always uh, my personal opinion. It's only meant to be for commentary. Uh, this is not something that's ever meant to be anything um, to promote hate or to have anybody feel that they need to go ahead and uh, dislike somebody. Usually what I do like to try to do uh, with the channel is try to call out anybody um, who I think is probably or possibly um, being problematic or somebody who is uh, using uh, media influence to win over a audience a group of people and trying to give that expert advice when they themselves are an expert. Like I said, I decided to try to change it up a little bit today um, and come outside and come out onto the patio. It is a rare day where the jets weren't coming out. I did have a moment when my neighbors started doing some work on the patio of theirs and it ended up I just it's been going on for a while anyway let's just get into the reaction I was surprised to see that Rachel Hollis had produced a podcast actually on Thursday and so I took a look at that and Okay, so let's take a look at the podcast that she has. What am I? I must be in the app store. <laughs> I thought it was in my podcast, but I'm not. I'm in a totally different thing. Okay, so I saw that she had posted. So she posted, uh, obviously, we know she did the edited edition, Rachel Hollis, of her podcast on social media anxiety and posting the social media post and it had been deleted and then edited and then reposted so she then decided that she was going to post a new uh, podcast out on the other day on Thursday just before the 4th of July holiday and it was quite an interesting title it was called six things I don't like about myself I was like okay oh the movie 10 things I hate about myself I know if it's from a long time ago but so anyway so she references the film 10 things I hate about myself and she wants to talk about six things she hates about herself and I think that's just I don't know I don't think it's ever good to talk about things um, that you hate about yourself sorry I was looking for something um, I don't think it's ever good to talk about things that you ever hate about yourself I think it's um, you know I know there's always things that we don't like about ourselves but I'm just curious um, to hear um, what she is going to say so why don't we just delve into this like I said I'm sitting outside uh, here uh, in the sunny parts of 
this beautiful Sunday and uh, having a chance to respond to this uh, Rachel Hollis podcast. So let me hold this close to the microphone um, of the camera. I'm trying to think whether or not I want to put my umbrella up because it's getting awfully sunny but it's five in the afternoon so it's evening okay so let me play this it's again six things I hate I don't like about myself sorry it's not hate about myself it's six things I don't like about myself so this is her most recent podcast let's go I do think there is incredible power in confronting the parts of yourself that you want to make better, the parts of yourself that you don't like. If you can't face it, you can't fix it. And so today I thought, well, what if I shared with you the things that I am working on because I do not like them about my heart, my spirit, the way that I show up in the world, and maybe talk you through what they are and what my process is and how I work to fix them because Maybe if I normalize that it's okay to find issue with yourself and maybe if I show you that finding issue with yourself is more about the parts that I want to evolve, not the way that I want to change based on what the world says that a woman should be or do or act like or look like or any of that, maybe that would help you because what I want you to hear about me and this process for me is I don't feel shame about any of these things. Hey guys, it's, my name's Rachel, I I know my own name. That was hilarious. I'm just gonna take another quick sip of this espresso. Um, We're gonna try this one more time. My name is Rachel and I am the host of the Rachel Hollis Podcast and I'm here to chat. So thank you so much for joining me, whether you are watching on YouTube or listening, wherever you get your podcast, I'm grateful that you're here. And I'm excited about today's conversation because I think it's interesting and funny and important and also I just feel like I'm chatting with my friends about stuff I am batching episodes of the show today and if you want you can listen in actually next week's episode is all about how I create my content where I get ideas from and how I actually implement those ideas and and get them down and put them out into the world whether that's a book a podcast like this episode my Sunday email just basically all my content so that's coming next week but when you listen to it you'll understand that I batch episodes so I do I try and do multiple episodes of the show in the same day so that I can free up other days to do other things. That being said, I have recorded a bunch today and I really wanted to get one more episode. I felt like I had one more episode in my heart. But I was like, I just kind of want to talk, but I want to talk about something that I hope will be helpful. And here is what popped into my brain. I was thinking about the movie, 10 Things I Hate About You, which is classic. I mean, Heath Ledger, beautiful. We had never seen a movie like that when it came out. I'm sure that I was going to say kids today, but you're not kids, are you? There's lots of you who are in your 20s. Like, when I was a teenager, that movie came out, and I had never seen anything like it before, and I loved it so much, and I didn't even understand that it was based on The Taming of the Shrew. I just, I just adored everything about it. That being said, the title is so iconic, and that moment in... <laughs> That was probably one of the things that was best known about the film was that it was based on a Shakespeare play, Taming of the Shrew, but it was uh, translated to a modern setting, and that was quite common. I I think there was a couple of other films. I want to say Clueless also was based on another... Uh, play or something that had been modernized to a modern audience. I can't remember which one that might be. I know definitely uh, 10 Things I Hate About You was definitely like a teenage version of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. So, um, but that was, you know, the whole thing. There was like the names of all the characters and everything. Anyway. I don't know. I had to do Taming of the Shrew, I think, in my final senior year or one of my years in what would be the British equivalent of American high school. So I was very familiar with that Shakespeare play. When at the end, if you haven't seen it, she's like has to read a poem or she has to write something or whatever, but she writes this list of the ten things that she hates about 
this guy. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry if you haven't seen that movie. I think it's like 25 years old or something. So <laughs> if you don't know that moment, um, my apologies. Uh, anyway, this is not the point. The point is she makes this list of all these things that she hates about him. And what you realize as she's reading is she doesn't actually hate anything about him at all. She loves him, blah, blah, blah. What it made me think of was what are things, instead of like things I hate about you, what are things I hate about me? Okay, now hold on. I actually won't use the word hate because I don't hate anything about myself. But what are things that I dislike about myself? Now, this might seem wild. And if you think that I'm about to be like, so you like, no. Girl, we are not, we do not do that here. We freaking love every, I was at the gym the other day and I was at the gym. The group I was with was a bunch of like, my boyfriend and like a bunch of boys in their early 20s. And I looked in the mirror at one point, I was wearing shorts, it was like leg day and I was working out with them. I looked in the mirror at one point and I, my legs, I have cellulite because I'm a human being with cellulite on my body. And there was like this ghost of Christmas past that was like, oh, no, not in front of these boys. And then I was like, you know what though? I'm gonna be 40 next year and I look good and these boys wish they could. I just like hyped myself back up. This is not a conversation about disliking the way you look or anything like that. It's not the typical stuff. But I do think there is incredible power in confronting the parts of yourself that you want to make better. The parts of yourself that you don't like. If you can't face it, you can't fix it. And so today I thought, well, what if I shared with you the things that I am working on because I do not like them about my heart, my spirit, the way that I show up in the world, and maybe talk you through what they are and what my process is and how I work to fix them. Because maybe if I normalize that it's okay to find issue with yourself, and maybe if I show you that finding issue with yourself is more about the parts that I want to evolve, not the way that I want to change based on what the world says that a woman should be or do or act like or look like or any of that, maybe that would help you. Because what I want you to hear about me and this process for me is I don't feel shame about any of these things. There are parts of myself that I don't like that I know can be better, but I don't feel shame about that. I sometimes feel daunted by it. I sometimes feel discouraged because I'm like, God, I cannot believe we're still working on the same issue 20 years later. But I don't feel shame. And I feel empowered by holding awareness of what I can do to help myself evolve. Uh, my friend Tom Bilyeu, I, I think I've quoted this quote of his so many times. He always says that he's... Not Tom Bilyeu. There's been a, quite a few creators recently who have shown a couple of things uh, in regards to Tom Bilyeu and impact theory and the different courses or the way he talks about wanting to work 120 hours a week and how he built Quest, the nutrition bars and so forth. And so that's, it's quite interesting because it's been recently that she has been including his wife Lisa and speaking of him um, it seems quite frequently and I just wonder you know kind of what is the relationship that's being built here I know that he certainly you know is somebody who's in that self-help you know guru space and so I just kind of it's just it's interesting to hear this podcast bounce off the podcast that she had about social anxiety and or and anxiety about social media postings um, which was totally nothing um, that would be very helpful for somebody who was in the real estate uh, industry at all it was very much focused at her and again these are things again she's like I don't know what all this like purging of her feeling this need to talk about her um, mistakes the fact that I think that she feels that she has been brought into part of the cancel culture I think that she is still you know maybe Possibly, I don't know when this is recorded because she said she stacks up and pre records and does these. So I don't know if this was something that she recorded prior 
to the release of the tickets for her Rach talk that is supposed to be going out and going on to a national tour. I mean, so I just, I'm curious to hear the things that she mentions in this. You know, I'm good, she's not mentioning physical things, but I think that would be something that could be very applicable for very many people. I think that's very dangerous tour, territory to get into when you're gonna mention physical things. So I'm curious to hear, I still, you know, six things she doesn't like. Okay, let's find out. She's, you know, talking about her boo thing again. Um, and hanging out with all these people and you know I still feel like she's trying to do that earth mother the uh, sort of spiritual guru type and I just I'm still curious with this rage talk talk what exactly is going to happen is she going to be taking questions from the audience and engaging is it just her literally just talking for two hours on a stage i'm just really curious of the format of this thing that's going to take place she just says it's going to be like a rage talk live but that would just be her talking about i guess whatever's on her mind often or whatever she googled that week that he stares nakedly at his inadequacies which is very intense and very tom if you are familiar with him and his work but i well, I wouldn't say like quite that harsh. I do think that he's a really powerful voice in this area for me because he believes that if you will look at the parts of yourself that you want to make better, you'll actually make them better. What most human beings do is they know something's wrong and they ignore it. They know something's wrong and they numb themselves to it. They know something's wrong and they move really fast. So they don't have to deal with the fact that they don't like this thing. Or maybe they, you know, maybe you try and like develop yourself really, 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 really well in another area because you're like, I don't want to face the fact that I do this and I know it's wrong, so I'll just get really good at this thing over here, and then everyone will focus on the good thing I did instead of this. So there's incredible power, I think, in being honest with yourself about what you need to work on, and that's what the conversation is about today. So let's start with a big thing that I don't like about myself but that I am working on and that I actually made it my goal to work on it this year. A big thing that I don't like about myself is that I can be a weenie. Like I am really scared of things that kind of don't make sense to me that I'm scared of. I could go stand on stage, literally, you could call me right now and be like, Rachel, we have 20,000 people waiting in arena in Honolulu. They need a motivational speech. I'm telling you, with zero preparation, I would go over there, no fear, in my exact outfit I'm wearing, my vintage bird t-shirt that I found in the flea market a couple weeks ago, I would roll over there and kill it and have no fear about that. I know there are people who, the idea of speaking in front of one person is debilitating. Me, 20,000 people, no problem. But I am genuinely afraid of things that other people don't, like it, like cold water. Cold water, look. That's you're like rolling your eyes. You're like, no, yeah, I really. Do. Well, I mean, you can't. I've got the sun, the the, the sunglasses on, so I apologize. But I really wanted to take advantage of this beautiful sunny afternoon and a change of scene, scenery for the podcast. Um, I'm sorry, it's not the most glamorous, but this is what uh, two hundred and forty thousand dollars will buy you um, in the beachfront area of Virginia Beach. Um, Anyway, I uh, I promise you, I didn't spend that much. <laughs> it's just what the current market price is. I've had this condo for a long time. Anyway, disclaimers, disclaimers, disclaimers. She is talking about having... Why is it if it's the first thing that you dislike about yourself? Is it that you mentioned this, this thing about the cold water? I don't get it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What would be the first thing that I would think if that I wouldn't like about myself? That I don't like always run on time. I can get up super early and still be late by five minutes. And I'd rather be five minutes early than five minutes late. I don't get it. I'm always running late. That's one of the things I really don't like about myself. And I feel like it's rude to people. It's not to the point of super rudeness, but it's a little rude. And it stresses me out too. 
so for the stress it causes me and for the rudeness that it is I would probably say that's probably one of the number one things I don't like about myself I wouldn't say something is just you know this wee a weenie thing about the water didn't she say she got in the cold water in England or something so haven't you broken that I mean just this weenie thing I don't know the word weenie you god yeah, there's a word that people use, and I say these aren't for children, and everyone knows the word I'm thinking about. It's just, I don't know, it sounds very superficial. It sounds like, you know, for all the work that she says that she does all the time, it doesn't sound like she's done much work thinking about this list much. So let's just hear this, and let's see what she has to say for the others. Really do. It's so uncomfortable for me, and I, side note, secretly believe that it's so uncomfortable because it doesn't align with my dosha, which you can go look up Ayurvedic medicine. My dosha does not like cold things, and I think I might have been a lizard in a past life. Just stick with me for a second, because I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's going to get more ridiculous or start to make more sense, one or the other. But I hate cold water. I hate the feeling of, I just have such a visceral response to it, and this has kept me from doing so many things. Getting in the pool with my kids, going into the ocean, I'm terrified of the ocean, right? Like, I love Hawaii. I get in to the water up to my knees. Like, my whole family has to talk me into getting up to maybe my neck. Years ago, we came to Hawaii, and we went swimming with dolphins. And we didn't go swimming with dolphins. Uh, I don't even know how to do that. We got in the water, and there were dolphins. And I remember, I'm talking about it right now, and my heart is pounding out of my chest, but I remember putting the goggles on, and just, I was on the surface of the water, and I literally just put my head down and looked in the water, and I could see, like, hundreds of dolphins lower in the water. Just the thought of how deep that water is, it is petrifying to me. I am just, I'm so scared of so many things, and it prevents me from doing a lot of stuff that seems fun. I'm afraid of, like, skiing is terrifying for me because it, it seems so fast. Skateboarding, anything that involves, like, going fast, just stuff that, I don't know. I, I, I think growing up, my family, what, they were pretty scared of that, and so they gave it to me. I mean, that's possible, but it can be that you're just not an adrenaline junkie. You just don't get your, you know, rocks off on adrenaline activities. I, on the other hand, you know, love to be, I'm not a little more timid about the water because I almost drowned once off the coast of Acapulco uh, in a place called Piedra La Cuesta. But... I have jumped out of airplanes and done bungee jumps and things of that nature. I would say that I probably have a little bit of adrenaline junkie in me. You may not have that as far as doing things that are like, almost like things that seem like very much, like I said, adrenaline items. Does not mean that you don't get adrenaline getting in front of a crowd of 20,000 people. There's, so I think it's just adrenaline with, you know, that type of activity that would probably have scuba diving or skydiving or bungee jumping, free falling, anything of that nature would probably not be your jam. But that's okay. But to have that as your number one thing you don't like about yourself, I think that would be like my number six if that happened to be a thing for me. I think that's just her like not really being honest in some ways if that's really the thing you most dislike about yourself wow I can't wait to hear the rest of this list and there's a lot of stuff I never did and so the the unfamiliarity of it is, is makes me nervous but anyway at the top of this year literally on New Year's Day I was with my boo and we were in Cornwall which is on the water in England freezing and I was looking out over the bluffs, I was looking out over the ocean. New Year's Day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day are like sacred days in my life. They're so important and they always have been. I love like visioning, envisioning a future and what am I going to do and who am I going to be. And this was the first year that I really didn't, I didn't set a goal. I didn't lay out a plan. I looked out over the water and it sort of came from my soul. Like I didn't even know I was going to say it. But I said, I'm so tired of being scared all the time. I'm so sick of being a weenie. And he was like, baby, you're not a weenie. What are you, you're so brave and you do all these things and you like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm brave with my work, right? 
I guess I'm brave when I think other people are involved, but if it's just me by myself, it's very scary to me. And I keep myself from doing stuff that other people do. My, my best friend, Sammy, she will jump into any body of water anywhere in the world. Like, doesn't matter, let's go. She's a water baby, she lives for it. And I'm just, I want that freedom. I want to do more things where I'm not so afraid. And I have, this year, because this was my commitment to stop being so afraid, I've done, I went skydiving, the most petrifying thing I've ever done. I have jumped, I, that same day when I said I didn't want to be scared anymore, I jumped into the ocean in Cornwall on January 1st in England. I you can't even imagine how cold that water was. I have done zip lining this year. I went skiing this year. I've, I've really challenged myself. I'm doing something this week that is the most scary thing I can, uh, uh, it's the most scary thing I've ever thought of. But basically the rule I have for myself is if I think of an idea of a way to face fear, I'm like, you have to do it. So I booked this thing on Thursday. I haven't told anybody about my boyfriend. And he's like, I'm sorry, you're doing what? To challenge myself to face another fear. And I mean, who knows guys, I could, this, this could be the last video I make for you. I mean, am I, if I... Must also be nice to have the money to just go ahead and do those things and the time off of work or the time to do these things. So, um, once again, my Jahalis showing us how to get, to get privileged even in her list of, you know, six things she doesn't like about herself. I'd like to look and see how many of the tickets have sold for her Rage Talk tour and see if that's one of the things she doesn't like about herself is how few tickets she's moving for that <laughs> for these events. Let's continue. So she goes skydiving and does some other fancy thing. It's out of most people's reach. My, if I don't survive or if I like have a heart attack in the scary moment, I don't know. But yeah, it's something that I don't like about myself. And it's not necessarily keeping my world from being it's not making my life bad, but I do think it's keeping my life from being better. I want to get in the ocean with my kids. I would love to, like, surf. That would be so cool. But I'm, you know, the ocean plus, like, moving. I was going to say, too, I think a lot of this shit is just, like, shit in her head now, you know. I think you get to a place where you overthink things through. And, uh, therefore, they become more difficult to overcome because you've overthought it too much. I believe I had read something when I was doing something in my psychology that if you have had a traumatizing event happen to you, it, the likelihood of you wanting to, to repeat that is probably very um, limiting. <laughs> limited, to say the least. You're not going to want to go through it um, because obviously you naturally hesitant and so forth so I don't know if something happened she just said she didn't get to do it as a kid so she's not mentioned that there was a particular event um, it could be that just you know sometimes as children we are a little bit more fearless being better I want to get in the ocean with my kids I would love to like surf that would be so cool but I'm you know the ocean plus like moving fast on a board anyway all of that to say being a weenie and being afraid is a big one for me. I've been working on it really hard this year. And I'm really so grateful that I figured out that this was something I wanted to face. And the only way that I know how to face it is to just keep doing things, running a marathon with no training, like just to keep doing things that seem scary. I'm hoping to decent. Can I just talk about the fireworks that are going off? Happy July the 4th weekend. No, can I just say about her and that dumb marathon that she keeps saying that she finished without training not only is that like a really foolish thing to do if you really had not trained for that event but to promote it as something that you did as an act almost of bravery i think is really not a fair thing to do to your audience she is somebody who has run distances in the past and so for her to keep saying about this marathon that she did without training and just kind of how proud she sees of it. I think it's just a really a bad narrative to keep having out. And I can show you right here that I was a distance runner myself when I was a child. And 
and I ran cross country, I ran track, 800, 1500s, I ran all types of distances and so forth and I never would ever, ever suggest that somebody just plain, plainly go out and run a race without preparing for it. So I don't think that's an act of foolery, not an act of not being a weenie as she likes to use the word weenie which is just like a 1950s word which is like it's freaking an antiquated word to use to anyway back to Rachel sensitize myself to the made up stories in my head about what is actually scary the made up stories in my head about what is actually scary so we'll see but that's the first thing is I don't like that I am so scared of everything not everything but a lot of things two the second thing that I don't like about myself I obsess over fixing people I do if I'm being really honest I do I actually was she obsessed with fixing Dave is that part of what went wrong in their marriage or what went right for a while because Dave was very open to being fixed. I mean, I don't know. Let's hear who she says she likes to fix and what things about people she likes to fix. That's not good. I don't think. If you're meeting people and already think you need to fix them, then why are you hanging out with those people? I obsess over how to fix people and then I crossed it out in my notebook here and I wrote help people because I thought that sounded better, but that's not me being honest with myself. If I'm being honest with myself, what I obsess over is the belief that I know how to fix other people. It's literally what I do for a job. I was about to say before she said that part was that um, she thinks that she is the expert on life because she's a life coach, I guess, is what her new job title is. And therefore what she does is she Googles a bunch of stuff and then she thinks she can get out there and like suggest other to the rest of us how to live life and also living her life in a very privileged manner in the way that she also lives it is not going to be what most are going to be experiencing in their day-to-day -day lives and so being able to take Hawaiian vacations every year or even consider buying a Hawaiian residency or being able to have a podcast and get up and take time to have coffee and brunch with friends. These are great and things that you know people do maybe at the weekend but she's doing this continuously in the week and just the idea of putting on a rage talk tour there had to be some money that she invested into getting this tour started so uh, I think that there's again that place of privilege but let's see what she says so she obviously likes to fix people so we know that let's go that's what she does what she says, what she does for a living. I thought she Googled stuff for a living or had conversations. <laughs> it's what I do. What I do for a job, I think, what I do for a job is I have problems in my life and I do a ton of research and I read books and I watch documentaries and I talk to experts and I work with doctors and whatever. And I, so I try and figure out a problem and then it's like a filter. Like I feel like I take this amalgamation of all these things I learn and then I distill it and I send it out into the world so I distill it on podcasts or my books or I just try and keep feeding the information I'm finding feeding it to you feeding it to you and so I have a ton of information in my head and I have at the risk of sounding like a douche lord I have helped a lot of people at conference or books or I you know people come up to me all the time and or though I just I know I'm not saying I've helped everybody but I know that I've helped a lot of people and when I encounter in my very real life my friends my kids my partner people at work and I know that they're going through something I obsess over it I obsess over just being like I don't say it but I'm like <laughs> like do these three things and 
I shouldn't say I don't say it because I absolutely am the friend that you call when you're fed up. When you have had enough, when you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you really want the push, I'm the one that you call. I am not the friend that you call to just sort of sit in it with you. Um, it's so interesting. When I first met my boyfriend, like when we were just friends and we are like on a walk, he said, he's like, you know, I am. So she is basically letting you know that she's not going to just let you have your moment if you're feeling a little bit sad about something she's got to come up with a plan of action to get your life back in course I fucking hate people like that part of my friend but I do sometimes you just want people to listen to your problems or your concerns or things you don't like and to always have that god that you know reminds me of a lot of you know how my mother would approach things and I don't want this to get to you know this conversation about parenting styles or mother daughter relationships or anything of that nature but I remember quite clearly that my mom and I have always lived very far from one another for quite a few years now since I became an adult and I began to travel and if I called with a problem, she would often get more irritated with me because she couldn't help me per se because she was too far away she felt to be able to help me. And really all I wanted was somebody to just, you know, have a listening ear. And it took us a few years to kind of, you know, get to a point where she understood that's kind of really all I needed uh, was somebody to listen. And so having the fixer friend um, isn't always beneficial. Anyway, let me not talk too much because otherwise this could have gone on forever. Okay, and apologies for, you know, doing the phone thing constantly. All right, and living in the sunglasses. My optician tells me to do that. I am the person that will sit with people in the hard stuff. I won't move you to move past it. I won't you know, try and counsel you unless you want counseling. He's like, I will just sit with you in the hard stuff. And I thought, that is so beautiful. And that is not me at all. And I have been so blessed by his grace and his willingness to sit with me and stuff. And I like to think that he's been so blessed by my unwillingness to sit and like, here are the answers and here are the solutions. You know, there's this whole saying that our greatest strength is our greatest weakness. And I think one of my greatest strengths is being able to rise up to you know the 50,000 foot level it's why you know I've gotten the opportunity to coach really big celebrities and business people and whatever like it's why I get those calls because I think I'm really good at coming up here and seeing a roadmap and, and helping you figure out a modality to get there but it is so hard when I, I, I'm positive that some of you are going to get this when you see a person and you're like I know what would make it better for you but the truth is that it is not our job ever to push our beliefs or what we think the roadmap is on that person because they are inside of their own journey and their own process. And what is like so, like can make me so sad is the knowledge that, like especially some of my older family members, that they may pass through this lifetime and never, they're never gonna experience change and they're gonna suffer. I just, I was talking to an older family member a couple weeks ago, and those conversations, honestly, I just sit, I sit there, I'm like, uh-huh, oh, wow, okay, great, and how's she doing, and it's not, there's no substance in it, because everything is just complaining, and they're complaining about stuff that there is a solution to, and I got off the phone, and I was, like, really low for, like, an hour, because I love this person, they're very important to me, but I've tried for years, I have tried, and nothing works and I, I know in my heart of hearts that if someone doesn't want to make change there's nothing we can do and also some people aren't in a place where they're able to contemplate that I have a, I have a really close friend who's going through a hard season right now and oh my gosh I'm just like I could tell you things that would help but they're not in a place they don't they need the person to just like love on them and have coffee with them and be with them they're not in a place where they're ready for solutions and actually 
it's one of my favorite things that I've learned in the last year is to ask someone, do you want, like if someone tells you they're going through something hard, do you want a distraction or a solution? It's a really great question. I am solution oriented, but I can also be really good at distraction. And it's important for me to ask that question so I can show up as a better friend. But I will, behind the scenes, I will obsess over all the things that they could be doing or things I know would help or books that they should read. But honestly, I just have to remind myself that that is... I'm sure it'd be like 20 self-help titles would be the books. It'd be like a book by Tony Robbins, a book by Mel Robbins, not married, not related, a book by... I don't remember. Dr. Amen. To be a good friend is to meet someone where they're at. Yeah, so I'm I'm learning that and I'm working on it. I'm still not there. But the good news is that some of the best podcasts I do are when I'm feeling really frustrated about not being able to help someone that I love and then I turn it into a podcast <laughs> So I'll be like fired up and talking about something and you're like, what? That's herself. The person I think Rachel loves the most is herself. Last week episode or on the social media was definitely for her. <laughs> Sorry. But don't they say, if you don't love yourself first, then you can't love anybody else? This girl talking about what to do when you're retired. How would she know? Like, no, I'm trying to tell you what you know. my aunt would not listen to. So, in any event, um, that is something that I'm working on. And as a huge thing in life, I'm working on the process of letting go. Letting go of my attachment to the outcome. Letting go of how I think things are supposed to be, letting go of control over the process, letting go. That is what I'm working on. So, yeah. Oh, am I going to give a number two of something I don't like about myself? Um, I guess that I am something of a procrastinator when it comes to doing certain like household chores, folding laundry, just certain things of that nature. I'm a real procrastinator, so that I don't like. Um, I wish I was a little bit more focused on keeping a better house. I keep hoping I don't have like some serious problem happen where I'm, I die or some medical issue and they find me up there and then I get like the local news broadcast that my house looks like a shithole. <laughs> That's like my great fear.